Hi, I'm Tim. Join me in this video as we discuss whether or not you can fly your RC model airplane in your backyard, the legalities of this, and uh, whether or not you can do it. The answer is you can, but it depends. So let's get into it. I've been flying radio control model airplanes for over 50 years. Back in the early days, up to about 20 years ago, RC models were fairly large, they were certainly loud, they were gas powered, they just needed a lot of space to operate. Virtually everybody, unless they had a private farm, flew at club fields. It was just not practical with those larger models to realistically fly in your backyard. These days, with lightweight electric flight, drones, RC models, it's very easy to fly an airplane in your backyard if you have a backyard big enough. Uh, so what are the rules and, and thoughts about doing this? Uh, two examples that I can give is this uh, uh, Quick Oats by Stevens Arrow. I'll get the links in the description. Just a wonderful little flying sport model. And also on the channel, <clears throat> I've done numerous conversions of uh, Guilo's uh, electric uh, powered models. This one is just three ounces. Uh, this would be an ideal backyard flyer. So let's talk a little bit about some things you need to think about and take into consideration before you do this. Thank you as always for likes, subscribes, and super thanks. They truly help the channel a lot with the algorithm, allowing me to make more content. Thank you. To fly an RC model in your backyard, and when I say RC model, it could be a fixed wing model, it could be a drone. There's really three things that you have to take into consideration. The first is, do you have the rights to the property that you're gonna fly on? The secondly, you're gonna to have to think about neighbors that might be impacted by this flying. And finally, you're gonna to have to think about the FAA or the Federal Aviation Administration because they control the airspace that's over your land. So let's say that you have a backyard. <clears throat> there is adequate space to safely fly the model. You need more space for a bigger model. And it's an electric model, so it's gonna be fairly quiet. There's no problems because you own that land and you are allowed to fly your model airplane on that. Unless there's some restriction in the Covenant community, there should be no issue using your land to fly just from a property owner's viewpoint. What you do have to take into account are your neighbors. Even though you're flying a model over your property, there could be um, harassment, nuisance, or trespassing considerations. If, for example, your neighbor has a fence and a drone has a camera and they believe that you're taking pictures over that um, fence, that will be a consideration. We're not going to go into a lot of detail of that right now, but it's something we have to think of because as more and more of these uh, popular lightweight RC models are out there flying, especially drones, local law enforcement is getting more and more involved, whereas they did not in the past because as I mentioned, most of our RC flying was at a local club field. So we've talked about you're flying over your own property, so that's okay. You are gonna make it a point not to be a nuisance or considered trespassing on your neighbor. The third thing that you have to think about is the category of airspace that you're flying in. Even though you own your property, the airspace, the minute you get an inch above the ground, the airspace belongs to the FAA from a control um, uh, situation. So what does that mean? The FAA is concerned with flying safety and they have to deconflict full-scale aircraft, light aircraft, modelers, parachutists, hot air balloons, a whole bunch of stuff. And so what the FAA does that concerns us as modelers is the airspace is essentially defi defined into two types. It's either controlled airspace or uncontrolled airspace. What controlled airspace is very important for full-scale pilots. It just allows the FAA to control aircraft in that area. There are certain weather minimums. They are given letter codes uh, A through E, and they're all different levels of control. So what has to happen from a model viewpoint, this is the important point, you have to know whether the airspace in your backyard is controlled or uncontrolled airspace. That's all you really care about. And so there is a very easy to use app that anybody can get on their smartphone to determine whether or not the airspace is controlled or uncontrolled. Later on in the video, and again, there's chapters all throughout this, um, uh, through this discussion, I will show you the Before You Fly app that'll show you very quickly, very easily, whether or not you're in controlled or uncontrolled airspace. So as a preview, if you're in controlled airspace, you need to get FAA's permission to fly even in your backyard. If it is uncontrolled airspace, you are good to fly. 
The one thing you need to be careful of is a um, temporary restric restriction on spe special use air airspace. I'll get to that a little bit later. But for most people, unless you live a couple miles from a busy uh, metropolitan airport, you're going to be in uncontrolled airspace because even Class E airspace, the least restrictive of controlled airspace, typically begins about 700 feet above ground level. We're supposed to fly our models below 400 feet above ground level, so you should be okay unless you're very close to an airport or a temporary flight restriction. So there's another area of rules that we need to discuss a little bit for flying in your backyard, and that is the distinction the FAA puts for RC model aircraft between commercial operators and recreational operators. Back about 2016, Congress directed the FAA to focus more on uh, small aircraft operators, drones, RC pilots, because these um, aircraft were becoming more and more uh, available. Um, there were more incidents in the airspace, so rules started coming out. The first thing the FAA did was to find um, commercial operators. A commercial operator is somebody who flies their model for some sort of benefit or financial gain. If you're that, you fall into Part 107 of the uh, Federal Aviation Regulations. That is a whole other thing. Um, Two-hour test, there's a lot going on. You know who you are if you're commercial operators. This is more geared towards recreational operators. If you are a recreational operator, that means you fly just for your pure enjoyment, Sunday afternoons at the club or just in your backyard. There's no financial gain or whatever. And so the FAA is still evolving its rules on commercial operators, but there are eight general rules, um, excuse me, on recreational operators, but there are eight general rules for the recreational operators. So let's just go through them real quick so that we're on the same page. The first of eight rules for recreational flyers, the aircraft is flown strictly for recreational purposes. There's no financial benefit at all. Number two, it's operated in accordance with community-based organizations. The FAA is still working to define what a community-based organization is for model airplanes. Right now, just think of the AMA or the Academy of Model Aeronautics and their flight safety code, same one that they've been using since the 1950s. The next item for recreational flyers are the aircraft has to be flown in visual sight of the operator or your observer. It's a first-person view. You have to have somebody keeping an eye on the aircraft. It can't go behind buildings or over hills. Just, again, safety. The fourth rule, the aircraft has to operate in a manner where there's no danger or interference with manned aircraft. You have to get out of the way of any manned aircraft to the RC model. Five, if you're flying controlled airspace, which we'll get to in a little bit more detail, you've got to have permission from the FAA to operate in that controlled airspace. Again, controlled airspace, the FAA has a pretty good idea who's in there. If you're in there, you can fly, you just need to get permission from the FAA before you fly in there. That's typically if you're flying within about four to five miles of a controlled, um, of an airfield with a control tower. Six out of eight, if you're flying in uncontrolled airspace, you have a maximum altitude of 400 feet above the ground. You can't go above that. And finally, the recreational pilot, RC pilot, has to pass a test. It's called the trust test. It's an online free, um, uh, training to 100% test. You take it once, you're good for your whole life. It's a good thing that we have to have as recreational pilots. And finally, number eight, the aircraft has to be um, registered. If it weighs over 0.55 pounds, it has to be registered. <clears throat> that is a simple thing to do online. You pay a $5 fee, you get a number. One number is for all your models, but they have to be registered. If it's under 8.2 ounces or so like this one, you do not need to register it. To fly recreationally, the idea being it's so small and lightweight, it's not going to cause any damage to anybody, anything else. Before we discuss the Before You Fly app to determine very easily whether you're going to fly your model in controlled or uncontrolled airspace, we need to talk a little bit about TFRs or temporary flight restrictions. Now, where I live in Georgia, I'm about 30 miles or so from Atlanta Airport. If I were to fly in my backyard, Controlled airspace starts well above 700 feet. There's no problem with that. However, there is always a chance a TFR or temporary flight restriction could be imposed over my backyard. These go uh, typically from the surface up to 30,000 feet. What causes a TFR most of the time is presidential travel. If the president is an Air Force One Atlanta airport, a TFR is um, established at Atlanta airport, but 
presidential helicopters, Air Force One can go to a lot of places. The TFRs pop up uh, sometimes at just very short notice. There could be changes of plans. The Before You Fly app will show you that if you're flying a model, or let alone a full-scale aircraft, in a TFR, that is a national security um, uh, incident. Uh, the authorities take it very seriously. It's just something you need to be aware of. And if there's any hint of presidential or senior um, executive travel in your area, look to make sure there's not a TFR where you're going to be flying. And this would be for your backyard. So let's talk a little bit. Then I'll give a demonstration of the Before You Fly app <coughs> that I use on my iPhone, but it goes on any smartphone. And what the Before You Fly program is, is an innovative program, the FAA, where the FAA is taking information of where the controlled airspace, temporary flight restrictions are, and other important data, putting it into a database available to FAA controllers and to the makers of an app so you can quickly, with geolocation data, know where you are on a map and apply the controlled, uncontrolled um, emergency use airspace very quickly on a smartphone. So it's a very innovative program. It's free and it just gives a clear or not clear indication on whether or not you have to go. You can use it on your present position or you can put in a position. What I'll do with the demonstration, I'll show you where I live on the map. Then we'll take a look at Atlanta Airport, which is obviously restricted airspace, a controlled airspace, and you'll see how it works. This is my smartphone. The Before You Fly app is here. We just tap it. And this is my location in Georgia. Notice that it knows a lat long and it's a green cleared for takeoff and just some details of where we are in Beaufort, Georgia. So we're, I'm good to fly in my backyard. A controlled airspace is well above the 400 feet that I'll be flying. We can take a look at the map layers. There's a lot of information on the before you fly. You can take a look at this. And we're done with the map layers. We'll go ahead and look at the other features before you fly, resources about the FAA and so forth. So now let's take a look at nearby Atlanta Airport, um, business airport in the US. Notice that is blue controlled airspace. So that's the note that we need some sort of permission to fly there. We scroll down <clears throat> and it says get your Lance, which is a permission from FAA to fly <clears throat> in the controlled airspace. We'll go ahead and take a look again where I live. It's back from blue to green. We're cleared for takeoff. We can zoom out. We can see where we are on the larger map of Georgia. Now you can see from that demonstration, you can very easily determine whether it's controlled or uncontrolled airspace, which is what we need to know to fly RC in our backyard. The question probably comes up, well, it shows controlled airspace. I would like to get permission from the FAA to fly in that controlled airspace. How do I do that? This is beyond the scope of this video, but what happens is another app you can download that works with the same database concept called LANCE. And LANCE stands for uh, the FAA's Low Altitude Authorization and Notification Capability. With a separate LANCE program, you input where you are, the information of what you want to do to fly. <clears throat> that gets transmitted to the FAA in a very short time, almost real time. You can get permission to fly your model given the request in the controlled airspace. But again, that's LANCE, primarily used by commercial um, RC airplane drone operators. So let's get into that area that I touched upon before, local law enforcement um, offices and how they can impact your flying if you want to fly in your backyard. As more and more of these uh, electric powered drones and model airplanes are flying around, there's more complaints to the police, the police are becoming more aware of them and you have a greater likelihood of the police asking uh, where you're flying, do you have permission? So it's good to know the rules of the road and where you might get into trouble with something like this. So let's take it as an example of public park. I used to live in Illinois. There were just numerous public parks um, all over the place. Very convenient for flying. Can I fly on a public park? Well, the answer is it depends. What you want to do is a little bit of common sense initially. You want to look around. You want to make sure it's not too crowded. There's not some youth sports activity by a school. Uh, perhaps you want to fly early on a Sunday morning to avoid that. You want to fly a fairly easy to fly model, not a jet or something that's going to be perceived as a danger. And just use your head on flying that model in a park. As always, with the before you fly, check to make sure that it's uncontrolled airspace. But if it's uncontrolled airspace in a park, you can fly. Police may come and uh, establish some sort of rule on that. But in general, you can fly at parks. Just use your head. And if the police stop to ask any questions, you have to stop and talk to them. 
So continuing with the parks, let's talk about some other areas you might be interested in. Can you fly in national parks like the Grand Canyon? The answer is no. In 2014, the National Park Service passed a law you cannot fly a small unaircraft system in a national park. It's just prohibited. RC drone pilots, you just can't do it. That includes um, model airplanes, quadcopters, drones, any purpose for recreation or com um, co uh, commerce. And this is important because the National Park Service includes monuments, historic sites, battlefields, seashores, biking trails, walking trails, rivers, anything run by the National Park Service. And the penalties are severe. Uh, they just don't want anybody um, impacting the experience of visitors to the national parks. Now, continuing on this discussion, can you fly in a national forest? You cannot fly in a park, but in a national forest, you can fly in the national forest. It's entirely permitted. And that's of interest because there's 154 national forests in the United States. There's about 190 million acres, far more space than the national parks. And this is why it's getting to be an interesting discussion. Why are national parks prohibited? National forests are allowed? Well, it gets into the law. National parks are highly vested in preservation. They want to keep everything the same. They don't want to alter anything, keep in the existing state, think the Grand Canyon. So drones and RC model aircraft are just not going to fit in a national park. National forests are set up by Congress with multiple use validation. They want to allow people within rules to conduct timber operations, recreation, grazing, wildlife, and fishing. So that's why the um, use of um, unmanned small aircraft, RC aircraft, are uh, permitted. Can I fly my model at a beach? Again, this is going to be a case of interfering with others. It's typically people at a beach, a lot of visitors. They may want the noise or the perceived um, privacy issues with the drone taking pictures of where they are. The best thing to do is just to talk to officials, lifeguards, um, anybody who appears to be in charge of the beach to ask if you can fly your model airplane at a beach. And this approach of just talking to the authorities is a good one to take as we uh, continue to develop our flying of these model aircraft in places outside of our backyard or club airfield. So a, con a, a constant theme I've had in this video, with the increase in popularity of drone flying, people and landowners are getting more interested in it, aware of privacy issues. And in the case of farmers, more protective of animals even. So we just have to accept this reality and work with the relevant authorities to do this. In line with this, the FAA, because this is a new information to a lot of the local sheriffs, local police, park rangers, whatever, the FAA offers a free digital toolkit to federal, state, other partners to educate unmanned operators that flying in certain areas is prohibited. If you see one of these signs or no drone flying is allowed, you just can't fly there. You can talk to ask why, but this will just be kind of a moving target as we continue with flying our RC model aircraft. Remember, there's some special thing that you want to film, and it's originally um, prohibited. There's nothing, there's no harm with a written request. Give the authorities a solution, not a problem. Say what you want to do, how you're going to do it, the time periods. You can always get an exception for just about anything. It's worth asking. All I can do is say no. So in conclusion, thank you for um, tuning into this video. Um, you can fly your RC model in your backyard, just you own the property. Make sure that it's uh, controlled, uncontrolled airspace, controlled airspace, get permission. You're not a nuisance or trespassing to your neighbors and you should be good to go. As always, if you wanna be absolutely certain that there are no issues, join a local club, fly with a club. All flying permissions are granted to that club. There's nothing you have to worry about with FAA permissions, anything, if you're at your local club. Have a good day. Thank you.